preach out of Revelation a lot, so it's unusual. So the book of Revelation. Chapter 1. I'm reading from this uh, New King James. I left my Holman's Bible at home, so you're going to have to forgive me and follow along with me with a different version today. Still the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It says here, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servant things who must shortly come to pass. Look at your name. You ain't got to worry about what's coming to pass. God's going to show you before it even gets here. Amen. That's why you always come to church, because when the prophetic word comes forth, it is to get you ready for what he's about to do. Uh, you ain't going to walk into the future blindly. God knows what's going to happen tomorrow while you're in your today. And he's preparing you today for your tomorrow. And somebody, the struggle you're in right now is not to bring you down, but to strengthen you for what you got to deal with tomorrow. Uh, so you'll be stronger. You won't break down during the time of testing. Uh, I believe if I had to go through stuff I'm going through now, 15 years ago, I would have broke down. Amen. If I got a report like I did last week, I would have, you know, couldn't have handled while well, I'm up here trying to put 8,000 people in a 2,000 seat building. I would have said, you know what, forget it. Lock the doors, forget it. But since the enemy has attacked in the past, I know the God that brought me through the past can take care of me in the future as well as in the present. Look at your name and say, he's building you up for tomorrow. So don't worry about it. You're going to fix this. He's going to listen. The Bible says he, when he come and tests you, if it gets too much for you, he'll make a way of escape. So that means he knows how much you can bear. I'm preaching to somebody. So if you had not came out of what you in yet, it means you're not quite ready yet to come out. But when you're in the situation, he's God in it just as much as he's in God out of it. And so he's giving you enough strength to bear it. Look at your name and say, neighbor, if it ain't over yet, then maybe God ain't ready for you to come out just yet. He's still teaching you how awesome he is. That even in the midst of the fire, he can still take care of you and you won't even smell like smoke. Somebody give God praise right now. Shout, I'm still happy in the midst of my trial because God's still on the throne. He said, he said, I'm showing you things that must come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angels to his servant John. John uh, was abandoned uh, to the Isle of Patmos. John was boiled in hot oil. Watch out when you tell God you want to be used by him. Uh, he have a way of having to reveal that to you. Uh, some of these people in the world now are running after, after the calling of God. I'll be honest with you, I ran from it. Because I realized that there's an attack that comes with calling and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. My sister told my pastor on the other day, she said, I'm called in the ministry. He was out there signing books. He immediately got up from his desk and he looked at where and he said, well, you better get ready for the devil because he's coming after you. And he said, but I'm going to pray that your faith will hold you. Uh, realize that when you start telling people God is using you, there's going to be some testing. There's going to be some trying. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, one day we was going by his Bible college and he screamed over there. He said, get out while you can. <laughs> he said, if you can do anything else and live, do it. Because if you're called by God, you cannot get away from it. I'm amazed when these people tell me God told them to do something, and then two years later, they've gone and done something else. If God told you to do it, no matter what, you're going to stand there and move. Why? Because God is the author and the finisher of your faith. I need mean, somebody right now say, when God tells you to do it, you can't quit. Tell people I quit the pastoring at least 1,400 times. I've quit so many times. I've quit on Friday and re-signed on Sunday. Because what happens when you're going through stuff in ministry, you think you can get away from it. But it's like fire shut up in my bones. i got to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I don't preach, I'll die. Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad that you can still serve God even when it don't feel good sometimes? Technically, you can still serve God even when it don't feel good sometimes. 
How many know that every now and then they'll get on your nerves and people will deal with you and you can't figure out what it is, but I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Touch me, so I'm still going to serve the Lord. Come on. It might be uncomfortable sometimes. Sometimes people don't do what they're supposed to do. Or maybe people might do you wrong in the church. But guess what? I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. How many know it was the Lord that called me? It's the Lord that justified me. Somebody give God a praise right now and shout, I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. He said, hey, listen, he said, Blessed is he that reads and then to hear the words of this prophecy and can keep those things which are written for there and for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be to you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness. Somebody say he's faithful. Amen. I'm in the wrong church. I say he's faithful. Amen. How many know he's a faithful God? Amen. How many know he'll never leave you? He'll never forsake you? Amen. Touch him and say he's faithful. Amen. How many know that man will let you down, but God will never let you down? Somebody say he's faithful. Come on. I'm like the old folks. He might not come when you want him, but he's going to be right on time. He's still on the throne. He's still making ways out of no way. I'm going to preach up in here in this 8 o'clock service. But somebody say he's faithful. How many know you can call upon him and he will answer you? And he'll come and help you right away. Matter of fact, somebody say he'll come and help you right when you need it. How many know right now he'll be there on the throne with you in the midst of your situation? Touch me and say, I can call up him. Say, I can boldly go to him. And he will not push me away. How many know right now he's going to be there this time tomorrow? He's going to fix it before you get up tomorrow morning? I'm prophesying this message. Somebody, before you get up tomorrow morning, it's already going to be all right. I said, the Lord told me to tell you it's already all right. What's his name? The, the guy that was... The, uh, uh, did the often a uh, Todd, whatever, whatever his name, he started shouting around here and running around. Been, been here and said, I ain't never seen him act like that. <laughs> I said, The reason he act like that, I said, This church in that Hammond, Oregon. I said, This church will make you preach. This is a preaching church. Uh, come on, said Mr. Neighbor, I need a word from the Lord. I, I'm hearing the Lord in my situation. So, see, there's somebody right now facing insurmountable odds. There's somebody up in there right now. You're going through a challenge in your life. And I'm letting you know right now, God is a faithful God. I promise you right now, he's a promise keeper. How many know his promises are yes and amen? Tell me say, say, if he said it, he's going to do it. Uh, you, you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to call him 30 times. I, the other day when we, the guy was going to fix the air condition, I called him and I said, are you sure you're going to do it, buddy? I called him because I wasn't sure. I had never had a relationship. I didn't, had no experience with him. So I called and I kept checking. I called after he got it in, is it cooling? But how many know when I told the Lord about my situation, I can lay down and go to sleep now. Because I know he knows how to fix it. Because, see, I got a track record with them. Come on, somebody. Do I have anybody got a track record with them? So, neighbor, I, I, I kind of know who he is uh, because he's been here before with me. How many have been in situations before? Gwen, when that report came, and Gwen said, we've been in tougher spots than this. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, yes, sir. She said, we've been in bigger storms than this. And he brought us through the end. He's going to bring us through this one, too. How many been through some storms in your life? Shoot, this ain't no storm here, it's just a little shower. This, this is a summer shower. It's raining over here, but it ain't raining over there. Come on, so how many believe right now? You got a little rain going on here, but it ain't over there. You ought to think it right now that the enemy meant it for destroy you, but all they're doing is bringing your faith up to another level. Somebody say he's a faithful God. And, and he says, he said, this is a, he's a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. And he's the prince of the kings of the earth. Now right there he's talking about you. He's the prince of the kings of the earth. So he's talking about me right there. In other words, I'm one of the kings 
of the earth. Come on, how many? He ain't talking about the king of Spain. He ain't talking about, see, he said prince of the kings. Royal people. Right. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I'm a king. I'm a, a, I'm a royal person. Uh, don't, don't look at me like I'm just some nobody. I'll be honest with you. When, when, anybody from Africa in here, so when I say this, I don't want you to get mad at me. But when I first started meeting people from the continent of Africa, everybody, a father was a king. And they were princes. I said, it must be a whole lot of kings. <laughs> I said, hi, everybody over there, kings. But it was tribes, and it was different tribes, so now I understood that. But, but I'm letting you know, we, we are called kings. In the Bible, see some of y'all look at me like I done lost my mind. Because you don't think of yourself as royalty. Uh, you don't think of yourself as somebody special. Come on, somebody. But touch your neighbor, I'm royalty. I'm letting you know right now, I'm marvelous made. I'm special. Come on, somebody. You know, a, a king, the Bible says in the book of Daniel, where the king's word is, nobody can dispute it. So when the king speaks, you can't say no. But I'm letting you know, when the king of king, so if a king can speak, and his word ain't disputed, but when the king of kings, come on somebody, says the name, I serve the king of kings. I, I don't just serve a king. I serve the king of kings, the royalty of God, the divineness of God, the splendor of God. I need about 15 people that know how glorious God is. You heard that Ben Hinn stole my message on Wednesday night when he talked about them angels. Yeah. Kind of scared me with some of them angels. So one angel ain't got nothing but eyes. Whole body filled with eyes. I, I read about that one, but I passed that one over. <laughs> of course, there's an angel that had the four heads. Of course, the eagle, the ox, the lion, and, and the man. And when he flies, of course, he flies and he makes specific sounds. But then there are the cherubims and seraphims. But then, then there are those angels that God put around us. Come on, somebody. Some of them are 50 foot tall, feet tall. And you think the devil can mess with you? Touch me, I got angels around me. How many believe right now you ain't just got one angel, you got legions? Just preach to my angels just then. I need some help down here. Somebody clap your hand right now, son. I'm calling in some angels. But he talked about how the angels in heaven stand before the Lord, and what happened, they continually go holy. And what happens, and they bow. Now, and then they come back up. So I asked the Lord one day, I said, why do they do that, Lord? He said, because whenever the Lord is in his position, he's always creating stuff. Amen. Or prophetically, or revelation is flowing. So what happened, they say, God done something great, and they go, oh. Amen. Then they come back up. He done did something else. Oh. Touch your knees every time you turn around. The Lord got done something else in your life. If you give him a break right here, before you get through with the break, he would have done something that holy. Oh, look at me, the holy I know. The Lord just did something in my house. The Lord just did something in my house. Touch him and say, holy, holy, holy. He said he, he, is, he is the first begotten of the dead, and he's the prince. Touch me and say, death can't even hold you. I'm going to believe right now, there's nothing you've got to fear in your life. Even if the enemy thinks he can fear, make you afraid of dead. Listen, Jesus got up with resurrection power. And that same power lives in you. Death is an invasion of one place to another. You go to sleep on this end and you wake up on the next end. Huh? Touch me and say, death has no sting. Some of y'all are afraid to live because you are afraid to die. But how many know you're going to live and declare the works of the Lord? And when you die, oh God, I'm helping somebody right now. When you die, baby, it's going to be all right. You ain't got to worry about driving some hole or something. Your body moves out of this situation and your spirit and soul runs back to God. Aren't you glad to be out to run the body? It's to be present with the Lord. That means you're going to see loved ones again. 
people that have went on. Jesus was the first begotten of the dead. Death had always had power. But when Jesus got up, death, where is your stick? Come on, somebody. How many of you swallowed up in victory? Somebody needs to let the enemy know he messed up when Jesus died. And because when he died, he got up. Oh, somebody clap your hands. He got up. I'm not even at my text. I'm about to preach up to you. To him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Somebody said that's power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. How many know there's no blood like the blood of Jesus Christ? Uh, your blood runs through your body every 26 seconds. That means every 26 seconds it runs through and it comes out. That means it does something, it brought something in, but it took something out. How many know right now the blood of Jesus just came with something in, but it took something out? Such an that God just cleansed you just in. How many glad he's bringing stuff out of your life, but he's bringing new stuff in your life? Oh, uh, somebody getting upset by what you just lost, but you got to get really excited about what he's just about to bring into your life. Hey! To me, I might have just lost something, but I'm just about to get something. Somebody give him a praise right here and shout, I'm going to shout because something good is about to happen. The next time something leaves you, start praising God. <laughs> we were sitting over there at the restaurant and this member came up and you can tell, I said this before, you can tell when they're still with you because they're, hey, pastor, and kind of greet you. But this one, hey, and they kept walking. And the preacher that was with me said, who was that? I said, those are ex-members. <laughs> and they kept walking and then I looked, I said, look, how many, how many is it? He said, seven. I said, now, they represent seven times seven. I said, they represented 49 members. He said, how you can see that? I said, whatever the devil steals from me, I did seven. You look at your name and say, whatever the enemy stole from you, you give it back seven times. So you ought to clap your hands and hit. So instead of getting upset when the devil steals something, you ought to shout. Let's God get ready to bring something back seven times more valuable. Somebody give him a praise right here and say, free, free. He said, he washed us with, with, our, with his own blood. That's one working power in the blood of the Lamb. That blood that cleanses you, that washes you. What can take away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Aren't you glad about the blood? The devil hates the blood. When you plead the blood on your family, the enemy gets upset because he knows he can't come through the blood. How many know the blood keeps him at bay? Because he knows that if he get anywhere near the blood, the blood still has power. I need somebody right now, you ought to give God praise for the blood. Shout out the blood, the blood, the blood. He, 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 he mentioned this, he mentioned this on, on Wednesday night, how the blood of Jesus was from God. Just like the first Adam blood. No woman had anything to do, nothing about the woman, but you had nothing to do with the birth of, of Adam. The Bible says he formed him from the dust of the ground and then he breathed life in him. That 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 pneuma, that life, and that's when the blood came into his being. When you the blood leaves your body is when you stop living. Not so much the heart, the heart is a pump system, but the blood is what keeps you alive. He said there's life in the blood. He said life in the heart. Life is in the blood. That's why man can't figure out blood. It still confuses him. And so what happens with when the blood is applied? The enemy knows that that power is in that blood. And so whenever you understand that God got the blood, you can plead the blood on your family. You can plead it on your children. And it still has life. Come on. When there's a death stuff in your family, you ought to say the blood of Jesus is about to bring back life into my marriage. Come on. Somebody plead the blood on your marriage right now. Plead the blood on your job right now. Come on. Somebody need to give God praise for the blood of Jesus. Shout that's power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Somebody give God a praise right now. That is power. Life giving power in the blood of the Lamb. He said, and he has made us. Here we go. And he has what? Made us. Look at me. He said, God made us. <laughs> how, how many know we are not ourselves? Amen. And he makes us. The, the Bible talks about we are the sheep 
of his pastor. Somebody say, he made us. How, how many know right now you can't do anything for yourself? But if he calls you, he justified you. Somebody said, don't get jealous about me. It was the Lord that did it for me. How many believe right now God's blessing you? Can I be honest with you? People get upset, but I'm blessed because the Lord did it. Touch me, you don't blame anybody. Blame the Lord. I just told him I love him. Come on, somebody. I just told him I'll be with him. How many believe right now that the Lord is blessing you, taking care of you? Say, he made us. He made us what? Kings. Stop right there. King said, he made us what? Kings. Said, kings. kings. The, the word, when you say I'm a king, that means I have privileges. Touch me some privilege. Oh, uh, you, don't, you don't believe that. But they say, I'm, I, I, I'm a child of the Lord. I, 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 I'm in the household of faith. I'm, I'm privileged, baby. I was born on the right side of the track. I'm really glad you got born again. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the house of the Lord. Come, I need somebody right now that he can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Touch me, say, he came to give me life and life more abundantly. Touch me, say, I'm a king. How many know your word has power? Somebody say, I'm privileged. Come on. Come on, say, I, I am an heir. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I, I, I live in splendor and royalty. I need about 15 people who believe right now that God has called you to be a king. Somebody say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a king. You know, Ben, ben Hinn was raised Catholic. And, and the nuns, uh, one of the reasons we got all these problems with the IRS and, and what we can't have, and you know, all these rappers can have, you know, houses. I was looking at one of them, what they call cribs, and the rapper was talking about paintings he had on wall. He didn't know what they were. <laughs> Nobody said nothing about his cause. <laughs> You know, nobody said that about all the stuff he got. You know, he got enough jewelry on that he can't even put his arm up. And, 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 and the reason we have problems is because of this vow of poverty that the church made years ago. And that's why you get this tax stuff going on. And, and what happened, we we, we we under attack always because it looked like we're trying to get something for free. I'm preaching up in here. Uh, and look at your neighbor and say, God wants to show you that if any Everybody supposed to be blessed. You supposed to be blessed. And what happened? These, these nuns raised up. They, they, they believe in poverty because a lot of them have surrendered everything to the church. They've left home and serving in different fields, you know, like Mother Teresa, and they most living in impoverished areas and stuff. And then Ben Hens, he was raised that way. He said, "Only the poor shall see God." They, 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 they preach that. You know, that's, that's their favorite scripture. Rich man shall perish. One day Peter was walking with the Lord and he said, listen, he said, he said, how hard it is for a uh, camera to go through the Alvinita for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. And Peter went like, what? Well, wait a minute. So he wouldn't have had any problem with it unless he was rich. That's right. He said, we don't have homes and brothers and lands to follow you. He said, man, no man shall receive in this lifetime a hundredfold for everything he left with me. And so what happened, they look at the English, they, they, was, they, was, he, they heard this poverty stuff so long, then he went to Rome to see the Pope. He said he was walking down gold hallways. He saw one picture of Michelangelo had drawn on the wall, it was as far as this building is. Now you gotta understand, a picture this size a Michelangelo will probably sell for a million. A million. <laughs> One. I mean, Paul drinks out of gold cups. Help me somebody. He got rooms where ain't nothing but gold. But he said, he said, them nuns must never came to Rome. It's amazing how preachers would tell you you ain't supposed to have, but they riding around in bins. Help me preach up with them. Take notice he ain't talking about the pulpit preacher. When he call you a king, he talking about you. Come on, somebody. Say so he's made us unto God. King. We ain't supposed to be the ones having to run under other systems. We supposed to be dictating the system. 
church in Asia, they ain't supposed to be running your life. You're supposed to be running their life. I dare two or three of y'all to get together in the power of God. And God said, I'm being the midst. I need somebody that the King of Kings just stepped into your throne room. Stepped to me and said, I'm living in the palace. Look at this, and neighbor, I'm living in the palace right now. The Bible talks about Joseph was in prison one night, but the next day he woke up in the palace. I'm going to believe right now God's about to take you from the prison to the palace. So I got royalty in my blood. So the next, I got royalty in my blood. That's why I look for the best, talk the best, walk the best, respect the best. If anybody ought to have the best, if anybody's going to have a house, I'm going to have a house. If anybody's going to have a car. About 15 kings to clap your hands and say, Preacher. Touch me and say, Whatever I touch, it prosper. So I'm a king coming. The Bible talks about you're going to receive your crown, but you're a king on this earth. And you're the ones that make the world move and what it needs to do. I need somebody who's just felt your royalty kick in. They said the queen. At the uh, 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 at the wedding, said the, the queen only was the only one that had on yellow. <laughs> so she made everybody else wear white. But when she walked in, it was yellow, like <laughs> like like y'all ain't on my level. Come on, son. Look at your neighbors, the neighbor queen of England. They ain't nothing. I'm a king in the whole wide universe. Touch your neighbor's and neighbor, you need to look like you got some, some royalty in your blood. You need to talk like you got some royalty. I need some kings up in here who believe that God got, said I got an inheritance. I mean, why the king, why the queen work at? And the prince, you ever see him going to work? I think one of them was in the army. Where they money come from? Their heirs. Come on, somebody. The system has been set up where they always going to have because they represent the royalty of the country. I'm in the right place. I, I need some folks who your citizenship is in America based on the world, but you got a citizenship in heaven. Take your name and say, I'm a citizen from heaven. How can it be you're an ambassador for God? You own earth position, but you own governmental business from heaven. I need somebody that know that you got God back in you, but whatever I find on earth is found in heaven. Don't mess around, no mess around, let me call home. I'm telling you right now, I can call home, baby, and home with this fact. So that for me, I need somebody to give God a praise right now. And shout, I can call my home. Shout, I'm a king. Matter of fact, 1 Peter, I'm almost finished. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, said, not only are you a king, but you are a priest. So, so did he just say I'm a priest? He, he made us unto God kings and priests. And, and I'll go, let me finish verse 6 and then go to 1 Peter 2 9. He has made us kings and priests to God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And one version says, and we shall reign on earth. Say so that not only am I a king, I'm a priest. Now I ain't talking about the guy running around with his collar. I don't wear color, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I think sometimes these guys got the color on, that's more power in the color than on you. <laughs> got that big clergy tag. <laughs> Ain't no power in you. That don't represent what God, based on what you got on the outside, it's what's on the inside. Touch your neighbor and say, God judges the inside of a man. And say, say, I need to know who I am. Come on. Come on. How many need to know who you are? That you are king and you are priest. And then 1 Peter 2 and 9 said, you are royal priest. How, how many believe a royal priest? That, that, means, that means I live in royalty. Now, I'm preaching to somebody. You've been living below the standards of God. 
and the enemy has made you feel that you somebody's leftover. But you chose him by God to be the one that God's going to use. And that's why the devil hates you because he never wants you to start feeling good about yourself. But you got to let him know you got a good time family. You got some people in your household. I need about 15 glorified hallelujah saints of God, kings and priests to give God a praise up in it. Guess what? They chose the priest from the tribe of Levi. They chose the king from the tribe of Judah. Took the nation, that's why I got royalty in me. I'm a, I'm a child of Judah. Come on. I, 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 I'm a praise warrior. That, somebody need to let the devil know right now you got some royalty in your blood because you know how to praise God. That shows you one of the king's children because you know how to give him glory. No, 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 don't do it. Because it, 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 it's part of who we are. And if you can't dance, you, you ain't one of us. You, you ain't got no blood. I blood in you. So when you start understanding that you one of God's children, you one of the king's children, and tell me you ain't black. You ain't got none of his blood in you. But when you walk around like the victory of God, come on somebody. I, I need somebody, you really representing the Lord really good. I, I, somebody, I'm representing the real good baby. I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. I'm first, I'm not last. I'm taking right now, I might not have a dollar in my pocket, but I still shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. I'm letting you know right now, baby, that devil ain't stealing my praise. Because guess what? When the praises go up, the blessings come down. I need somebody right now. I'm going to give God a royal of praise. Look at me say, I'm a priest. Say, say, I have the authority to go before the Lord. Come on. I ain't got to go through no priest. I ain't got to call Pastor Babylon. I can get that on my knees. But I can call God for myself. But I can do it as a priest for the Lord. I need some kings and two priests up in here to help them in and get them. To bring praises up to him. You are chosen. So, listen, I've been chosen. God made me. Come on. How many of you chose? God chose you. You didn't choose him. Well, I decided to join divine faith. It had nothing to do with it, baby. The Lord chose you. He handpicked you. Come on. Touch me, I'm chosen, baby. I'm, you can't stop me because I'm chosen. I, God went through all those folks and grabbed me and pulled me out. I need some chosen people of God. I'm chosen. Put it back up here. He said, I am a, this is a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, and then a peculiar. That word peculiar don't mean weird. <laughs> it, it don't mean walk around with, you know, looking all ashy and, <laughs> and defeated. No, that peculiar don't mean, you know, well, you just look like some, like that court look when we went to court. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he looks so bad, I, I started to just write a check to him. I'm telling you. <laughs> My mom got on my suit, man, I'm wearing dressed. <laughs> we walking there, and I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, boy, you look pretty rough. You're going to get mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> my cousin said when he got divorced, his wife is a glamorous lady, man. She's a beautiful lady, man. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble about this. He said when he went to divorce court, she walked in, he looked back there and saw a lady come in and he started singing, Sweet Lord. Sweet Lord. She, she said, her hair was tied up in the rag. She had on a dress that was hanging on one side. Her hair, she said, he looked, she, she looked so bad. He said, just give her anything she wants. Just give her. Look at me, said, peculiar. Don't mean that you look defeated. Peculiar is that when you go through stuff, you come out looking better than when you went in. Some folks can't figure out. They know what you've been through, but they should have known what you were going to. I, I need some peculiar people up in here. Because you don't look like the world. Because 